You just passed the bar. Yeah. It's like a, like a Jay-Z song. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's a Jay-Z song about the bar? He, he, well, he says he doesn't pass the bar, but he knows a little bit. Oh, okay. All right, well, so, I don't doubt that Jay-Z is super smart considering how rich he is. He's a billionaire, so. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't get there for no reason. That's true. But um, I... Uh, I don't know if I know any Jay Z. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever listened to Jay Z. Yeah, and not my thing. Mm. Maybe it is. I never listened to it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Give him a shot. So, right, what, song, what song should I listen to? Ninety Nine Problems. That's a good one. Oh, I guess I know that song. Yeah. Um. So, you're you're a a man of many talents, right? Is that fair to say? Um, I mean, you said it, not me. Okay, well, I'll say it. Um, mm-hmm. Are you are you officially a lawyer now? Are you? An uh, well, I'm getting sworn in tomorrow. So oh shit! There's still like you have to do an oath, and uh, yeah, there's still like a formal thing. This is some like um, ma- messianic but, rituals. But I'm eligible. I'm el- yeah. It, oh, it's definitely like that. Yeah definitely a secret society <laughs> do you get a sword of some sort at the at the no you, you just get this card that says oh. a number on it that's not as sexy Mm-mm. um and then you put an esq next to your name hell yeah are you gonna do i need to change my <clears throat> my phone contact for you yeah yeah you probably should yeah. you know i'm just kidding are you using your uh well, I guess they can see your name on the screen. Are you using, is it Andrew Cabbage Esquire or your? No, your, your yeah, it's not my name. name. Right. It's, uh, I didn't know what your real last name was for the longest time until I got a package from you. I was like, ah. Okay. Yeah, you, it's a secret. Do you think people, do people feel that way a lot? Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah. All the time people think that's my real name. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What but is, the people who think it's my real name aren't the people that I'm hiding my real name from. Ooh. It, it's the other people that I'm hiding my real name or hiding my fake name from. Right. Yeah. How'd you come up with the name Swamp Cabbage? What does that mean? Oh, um, okay. So uh, there is a legend of uh, it's a uh, Swamp Cabbage was kind of a, it's like a cryptic of like a um a central florida thing yeah like kind of like uh like swamp like skunk sorry like uh like skunk ape or like bigfoot like kind of thing skunk um, ape. okay yeah so but swamp cabbage man is specifically like a central florida thing um and uh there are stories i've gone back a long time uh real quickly it would be like uh when Disney bought all of the swamp land, uh, and I think that was in like nineteen, like nineteen fifty nine, I think is when Disney started buying the land down here. Yeah, um, they have reports of their workers being like scared off by Swamp Cabbage Man, and like there's a lot of stories like that, uh, and they documented it. <laughs> um, and then uh, you've heard the uh, you've heard the movie like Swamp Thing, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Swamp Thing uh, is basically Swamp Cabbage Man, except for uh, when they made the movie, they thought the name Swamp Cabbage Man was stupid, so they changed it to Swamp Thing. But it's based off of Swamp Cabbage Man. Shit. So, 
yeah so i just wanted like a, a local like reference you know that's why i did it so nice i think, a, I think it's cool that's a deep um, cut. but he's yeah. supposed to be like supposed to be like nine feet tall and uh there's a specific stretch of uh you know central florida like kind of in the woods where supposedly he chases down cars and lives out in the woods and so uh and he's supposed to be really fast like he can run like 60 miles an hour have you had any encounters or what you thought were no. encounters no no i'm not saying i believe he's real mm. i just sorry mm. that's a good name it's a good record label name did you have yeah. did you have were you andrew cabbage before the record label or is that same thing no um so the reason why i changed my last name on all my social media to cabbage was i just started teaching and i don't oh. want my students to find me yeah um reason why i changed it to cabbage i didn't give myself that nickname people started calling me cabbage because of swamp cabbage yeah so i just went with it for that reason i never wanted to be called cabbage <laughs> Some people call me cabbage. They don't call me Andrew cabbage or they don't call me my last name. They just call me cabbage. So yeah, uh, just a nickname. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's, that's why. So it wasn't anything planned. Uh, but I like the fact that I can keep my personal life and like my business life separate. So, yeah. How many, uh, cause I've found out over the years that there's a lot of, or not a lot, but there's more than you would think uh of lawyers in bands yeah uh you know i didn't know any until uh <laughs> i started telling them that i was in law school yeah and then uh, i found out people who were friends of mine who are lawyers and i had no idea right so I mean, we're talking about the same people yeah but uh, yeah obviously uh you know Wolfface and you vandal have lawyers in their bands yeah so and people don't know that so i think that's super cool but I knew both of those people for years and had no idea they were lawyers. And then uh, they found out it was in law school. And that's when I found out that they are lawyers. So that's well to think about, especially Wolfface. Yeah. It's funny. Just to, uh, I wonder if anybody, anybody he's like uh, been in court with has uh, oh, yeah. some, some mm -hmm. by some way just been at a Wolfface show. I know uh, there's another band uh, uh, from a small town in Florida that uh, one of the guys in the band is a lawyer, yeah. uh, but the band doesn't play very often. Like they play like once a year and stuff, but um, pretty much everybody in that community <laughs> knows he's a lawyer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, everyone in the legal community in that small town knows he plays in a band yeah. and uh, he can't hide it. You know, where I think everyone else kind of hides it. So. Yeah. But, like, I feel like uh, even, like, the judges have seen him. <laughs> seen videos of him playing. Oh, man. So you got... So you're in a bunch of bands. Or two bands right now, mainly, right? Caffeine's and Vicious Dreams. Yep. You guys stay putting out music. Or it seems like that. Try to. Yeah. Vicious Dreams just put out a full link, right? Yep, I got it right over here. Boom, I see it. What, uh, you can see it? I, oh, no, see it. I wasn't playing for that. Oh. Yeah, that's the poster from it. No. Boom. Right. Yeah. This is the last release that Swamp Cabbage did. Yeah. So. Was, did you, was there any uh, worry about selling them during COVID? Or were you guys Absolutely. like... Absolutely. I know a lot of good bands right now that are having difficulty uh, selling records that, uh, you know, like, like, obviously, we didn't have a release show, you know, and uh, you sell more records at your record release show than anything else. Right. You know, so uh, without that, it's pretty difficult. Um, so I know I know good bands that put out records during COVID that, um, you know, their records aren't moving at all. And they're good records. And it's just because people aren't paying attention to, you know, new releases coming out. I think some people are paying attention more than ever, but, uh, but a lot of people don't realize it, you know, um, that some of the bands they like put out a new record. Um, so we tried to be creative and, uh, you know, tried to 
put out as many videos and stuff and do contests and try to get some attention that way. And it's going good. Um, I mean, I'm happy with how, it, how many pre-sold and uh, how many we sold since then. Uh, but if we would have had a release show, I mean, it, if we, if we had a release show, we would be 50% sold out now. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it would have been cool. Maybe one day, <laughs> Maybe one, uh, yeah. but I know, uh, even like bigger bands, like a lot of bigger bands, they've been sitting on records for months and right. they're not going to release them until they can tour because, you know, bands that actually make a living, uh, that's a huge difference. And if you put it out now, you know, if a bigger man puts out a record now and doesn't tour, you know, when they finally can tour, tour in like a year or whatever, it's not going to be a new record anymore. And people are going to have forgotten about it. Right. You know? So yeah, some bands, some bands have been sitting on their full lengths for a year, which, uh, caffeines, we've been sitting on our full length for a little while. Uh, we finally, uh, just announced it the other day. So, yeah. Yeah, um, but I but I've been sitting on that one forever too. Which <laughs> these are done too. Hell yeah! Uh, but no one's seen these, so this is the first time anyone's seen wow. the artwork. Anyways, a just, debut. You know, is, yeah, did you get a uh, Tom? What's his name? To do the art? Yeah, yeah, Tom Lowe. Tom Lowe. Yeah, that dude's awesome. Yeah, it's sick, man. Yeah, so wow. we've been sitting on that record for a while, and uh, yeah, it's that one's coming out and. Uh, I guess like three weeks four weeks damn something like that um yeah that sucks man that's this is a, a tough time for everything um mm-hmm. especially during normal times it's it it takes long enough to put out an album like from record to press to actually have yeah them. yeah people don't know that it takes like six months anyways you know? yeah at least so. like a quick turnaround. Mm. So the caffeine's record. Uh, we're just like this thing has to come out before the end of the year because uh, it's been done for. You know, I think I think we finished. I think we got it back mastered back in uh, back in December. So oh, damn. it'll be basically a year that it took to get it out, and I, we just weren't in a rush because we're not playing shows. Like originally, the plan was it would have came out like. Uh, at least three months ago but what's you know what's the point right uh, you know if you can't play anyways damn um when do you think damn i don't know when do you think we're gonna play shows again a year at least uh, i have a clue me either i don't even want to pretend yeah <laughs> uh, whenever whenever there's a vaccine and yeah I'm sure there's good news lately but uh, who knows what that means i i'm not going to pretend to know what that means but right. i don't think that that punk bands are going to be touring until after vaccines been out for a little bit. You know, I know that there are some kind of bands that like things could work, I guess, and they can still be safe where they do like, you know, limited and like tables, I guess that's okay. Or whatever. If you're still, you know, social distancing and wearing masks, like, I guess some bands can do that kind of stuff, but like punk bands can't do that. That's right. never going to work. Like you're not going to play a show where you know there's a fourth of the people that would normally be at your show and they're sitting down at tables like that's not you know punk, punk shows everybody's right up against each other so yeah it, yeah i don't want i don't even want to try to guess when it's going to happen right. but yeah i've seen some people um in our area trying to do shows now and it's you know it's hard enough to get people out to a normal show in 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 non covid conditions but now yeah i mean bands are starting to do it here too but it's um i mean i got to be honest with you it's uh it's local bands and uh, and i feel bad for the bars you know like for sure i got a bunch of my friends own bars and uh i feel real bad for them cuz they're all struggling but um i think that even if a local band could play a show and it could be safe, which I'm not convinced that it is, but even if you can, um, you're really hurting the the touring bands. You're really hurting the bands that are trying to do this for real, you know, right. because if local shows are happening now, it's going to push it back even farther. 
until, you know, bands can tour. Like, and I'm not even saying necessarily bands that are making money, but I don't want to play shows until you can tour for real again. Yeah. You know? I think, you know, uh, it sucks. I want to play shows. I want to go to shows, but I'm, I'm not going to right. because that hurts all bands. That hurts everybody, especially the ones who are trying, yeah. you know? So yeah, maybe the local band can do it and be safe, but, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, you know, the bars get sh- shut down again. And then it's even longer until, um, hardworking musicians can get paid, you know? Right. So. Yeah. That's uh that's how we are. We're not going to, not going to play until everything's yeah. all good. Mm. Mm. What is, what is one thing you don't miss about touring? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I like touring. The oh, last yeah. couple were good. The yeah. first couple were a little rough, but you know, uh, you know, um, I mean, I guess I don't miss, uh, you know, only getting like four hours of sleep every day so <laughs> Yeah. after, after two weeks of that, like it, it starts to get rough on the road, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, here, I like when, um, you know, like you go play a show across the country and you've been on tour for a little while and, um. You, you're there with some friends, you know, that you've known that uh, they put you up or whatever. And um, they think you want to party after the show. Yeah. And, uh, and you haven't had more than four hours of sleep in the last week, you know, and uh, so they, they want to party all night with you and you just want to sleep. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't miss not sleeping on tour. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. It's it's weird. I miss driving for some weird reason. Yeah. Yeah. Just driving, you know, for hours and going. I mean, to, you can still do that. I can do that. It's not the same, man. You know. Yeah. Uh. Bunch of sticky dudes in a van, going somewhere. Miss miss the smell. Miss the smells. The the, the aromas. The tastes. Hmm. Mm. But you know, what can you do? We're all in the same boat. Yeah. Mm. So you said you you've done a lot of podcasts. You've been on a lot of podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is the general uh, feel? Because I'm this is a new podcast for me, and I'm still f- figuring out my uh, my way of this podcast. This is a little different. Yeah. This is a little different because most of the ones that I've been on were just like you know, you have a new record out and somebody asked if, uh, they can, uh, play some songs right. and if you can answer a couple questions and, but not like, this is like, you know, a real conversation. Yeah. That's usually just a quick thing, mm. you know? Yeah. So this is totally different. I've never done one like this. No, yeah. well, I'm getting, hopefully I'm interesting enough. For oh people yeah. To oh man. Stay. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like, that those are podcasts I like the conversation ones because it's like I've listened to some uh, punk podcasts that have been like that format where it just seems like it's a like bad like radio local radio show or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And that's not fun. I don't know. A lot of people. It seems like a lot of people use the same formula for a bunch of stuff. It's, uh, Cause it's kind of like, I don't know, kind of like music maybe where uh, people get into a certain formula. Yeah. But caffeines have been, uh, the sound has been changing a little bit. Is that, is that fair? In yeah. A good, in a good uh, way. I, we try to make, um, our records sound different, but although that you said that, um, if you're basing that off of the last couple of songs that we've released, most of those are the, uh, the weirder songs. <laughs> it okay. just happened to be that way. So like the last, the, uh, the last song that we released that we, when we announced the new record, right. That's just like the joke song. That's like, um, 
you know, like the title track, but it's just a joke song. Uh, that song, um, that's the shortest song on the record, I think, pretty sure. And then the one before that uh, is on the record, but that was before we announced the record. And that song is the heaviest song that we've ever done. And that that song fits with the record the least <laughs> out of all the songs on the record. Okay. So both of those songs are no in no way a representation of our new record. Now, the, the song Darkest Timeline, that uh, that video came out, that was on the four-way split that we did not that long ago. Right. That song is the only song that's on both. And uh, that song is what the record sounds like. Ah, uh, okay. So specifically that song. And then that split that we did, that four-way split that that song was on, um, like that record had our first ever ska song. <laughs> so we've been a band for 11 years and this is uh, our third full length, but we've got enough tracks to have four or five full lengths yeah. out there. You know, so many splits and B-sides and stuff. So uh, out of, you know, like, out of like four full lengths worth of records, um, we did one ska song. I think that and might be too much ska, maybe. Well, we have a joke uh, that uh, the reason why we never did a ska song before, um, we have a joke that if you upstroke one time, then you're a ska man. So, Oof. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we did one ska song, and it's just a B side. And, you know, that record's almost sold out. So, um, so that song will be gone soon. Oh, shit. Yeah. Do you uh but, do you guys But there are horns on the new record though. Um they're not ska songs, but there are uh same thing with uh our our second full length. We had a couple tracks. I think we had three cha- tracks on our second full length that had uh saxophone on it. Yeah. Um so on the new record, I think there's three tracks that uh we had the horn section from um from uh, control this okay play um and uh it'd be cool one day to play a bunch of songs with them sometimes jeff will come up and play like a song or two with us but we've got we could probably play half a set now with a full horn section yeah if uh if it's ever safe again you know <laughs> we we've talked about it uh but those songs aren't ska songs they're just songs that have you know trumpet and sax on them so when you guys uh start do you do you have the idea of whether you want to do a full length or a split whenever you start uh getting songs together how's what's uh, that so, process so what i do now uh because records take so long to come out yeah what i do now is um all right let's say that uh we want to put 14 songs on a new full length we'll go into the studio and we'll record you know, as many songs as we can, maybe we record 18 songs. Right. And then, um, we pick 14 for the record and then the other four will end up going on splits and stuff or songs that, you know, we didn't think made the cut. Yeah. So we always have a couple songs that we're sitting on like that. Um, because, you know, we might only record once a year and then, you know, you want to be able to release records. So, and records take so long right. that, uh, you know, it's good to have something, in the works coming out, even though, uh, you know, you already have stuff going on, like, like vicious dreams that that's our first full length that just came out. Right. Uh, you know, at the beginning of this month or, uh, on, on Halloween, our first full length. Uh, but we have a second full length already demoed and, uh, <laughs> it's good that it, that the, the LP finally came out cause we have a second one that, um, I, it might be like, a uh, month or two or something, but we're probably going back in the studio and doing our second full length really soon. So, damn. Yeah. Do you write any of the songs? Uh, so I I I don't write music. Um, I help out a lot with structure. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, I write a little bit of lyrics. Yeah. Um, but. Mm, not a ton, like maybe like one song on a record. I wrote all the lyrics to, um, I'll help out if, uh, somebody's stuck, um, with caffeines, I come up with a lot of the song titles, Okay, <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting that, uh, 
caffeine's kind of do a goofy thing, you know, and right. like, you know, jokey song titles and stuff like that. And then Vicious Dreams are actually the exact opposite. Vicious Dreams is like very like traditional and everything and like, you know, uh, nothing goofy, you know, like no goofy song titles, you know, so. Yeah. But caffeine's, I get to be creative and I get to come up with a lot of the song titles, so. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm... Robert does like 95% of the songs. Yeah. And uh, I'm just not good at writing songs. I, I don't know. I just, I just, I always feel silly whenever I'm like trying to figure out lyrics. I'm like, oh man, these are real dumb. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, for, you know, everyone has a job to do in a band. For sure. You know, have your responsibilities. And uh, so like caffeines, like uh, I handle the business stuff. And um, Lance is kind of the personality, and uh, he's one that we—he's like the salesman. He's the bad boy. And then, uh, yeah. Tim, Tim does, uh, Tim does like most of the artwork. Yeah. Um, whether not necessarily that he's drawing stuff, but like he comes up with the ideas and um, stuff like that. And Tim, uh, Tim does like our, our videos and stuff like that. Um, anything that we need, like, you know, media wise, Tim usually doing it. And then, uh, Andy writes the majority of the songs. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Andy's the talent. <laughs> He's the talent. Yeah. Andy's the talent. Tim is the, the, uh, the brains, the, yeah. uh, Lance is the, the body, the, look. the looker. Yeah. And you're the, you're the, uh, the backbone, uh, yeah. muscle of the group yeah. everyone has a job yeah yeah i think that's the most difficult thing to figure out whenever you're a band yeah i mean it takes uh, the longest i think you know i think with bands like everybody should be contributing in some way yeah. you know so whatever that means but everyone's contributing you know um that way everyone feels like it's actually their Mm. You know, thing. it's and, precious uh, to them yeah yeah you know and then uh you know uh, i think it helps people getting along and stuff you know yeah uh, I, I i know a lot of bands i mean i don't know how they do it but bands where one person controls everything i can't be in a band like that like there's no way um but a lot of bands are like that where one person literally does everything and the other people are just you know basically hired musicians just nobody knows it you know like yeah. that's that's weird to me you know yeah that's weird you gotta you gotta have some skin in the game i think now yeah. who's uh who's all putting out y'all's full length uh caffeine's record uh yeah caffeine's coming out um on vinyl in the u.s it's uh swamp cabbage rad girlfriend and uh in no time Okay. And then uh, on vinyl in uh, Europe, it's coming out on Monster Zero. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Pretty, pretty stoked on that. Uh, finally getting to do something with Monster Zero and Hell love yeah. that label. So, uh, and then uh, it's coming out on cassette on No Time. And then uh, it's coming out on CD through uh, 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 Gutter Pop. Okay. I almost mix it up with the CD for Vicious Dreams. So yeah. I was like, which one is it? Yeah, Gutter Pop. Mm -hmm. My bad for they listen to this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Um. Wow. It's yeah, and putting out records, people don't realize how many people you have to get involved, and in, like how much you have to orchestrate. Yeah my my philosophy on that is um. The more people involved, the better. Personally, if you're not like a, a big band, right. you know. But that, that's how I, I I kind of, you know, I run it as a band. It, when I when I say that, that's how I feel about Caffeine's putting out a record, not as in Swamp Cabbage putting out the record, you know. So, um, but I think as a band, uh, if anyone wants to help you and they want to promote you and you know, and they're not really making money, they're doing it because they actually like you. Yeah, you should. Let <laughs> that's how i feel about it you know what i mean like um the more people pushing your record the better like you know that's only better for everybody for sure so you know um 
I mean, I'm not saying put a hundred labels on it, but like if you got a couple labels and like, they're not really in competition with each other or that kind of thing. Like, um, I'm pretty sure all of the labels involved, uh, have different distributors. Uh, so, okay. you know, it's, it should, uh, it should only sell better. It shouldn't be competition between the labels. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, man. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, during COVID, uh, I've been able to kind of like step back and reevaluate a whole bunch of stuff. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just trying to, f I'm always trying to figure out what's a better way to, to get eyes on, on the band. Um, what do you think outside of putting out records, obviously, and touring, what else can bands do? Well, that's what I was saying about like releasing a record right now, like trying to be creative on how you're pushing it, yeah. um, getting attention. Uh, so like with, uh, the vicious dreams album that just came out, like we did multiple videos, we did a contest, uh, a lot of things that we were giving away for free and, you know, different news sites involved, like everybody that we could, everything that we could think of to get, you know, attention, you right. know, um, I'm sure there's better ways anyways, you know, but we were just trying to be creative and trying to come up with new things to get people to keep paying attention. But as far as uh, just bands in general right now, uh, my advice to bands right now, and, um, you know, I think a lot of people are doing this, but uh, my advice to bands right now is um, you got all this time off, like, write The best record you've ever written, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, um, you got the time now, like, uh, you know, get some new, some new music written and recorded, you know? And then, uh, when bands do come back, yeah, you got this, uh, this good record to push. Yeah. Where's the place you'd want to tour if, if thing, things were normal, where what's like the dream tour for, for either well, band? For either band. Um, I mean, I, I've never toured Europe. We've had plenty of offers, just can't get it together. Yeah. <laughs> but never toured Europe. Um, I've toured, uh, I played in all over the U.S., played in Canada, played in Mexico. Never played in Europe. Played in Puerto Rico a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but never, never done Europe. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. Uh, there was a good chance that we were going to go over there. Um, basically around like, uh, like August, um, was the original plan. Vicious dreams were going, we were, we had a tour planned. Um, that was a, a couple weeks and, uh, there was a good chance it was going to be in Europe. And, oh, uh, yeah. So none of that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So. Bomber man. <laughs> yeah. So. Hmm. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. We'll, we'll do a Handsome Scoundrels, Vicious Dreams, Caffeine's tour. In Europe. In Europe, yeah. <laughs> Nobody will go. Nobody's going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, but it'll be fun. Yeah, it's the exposure. Yeah, That's what they're going to tell us. They're going to pay us in whatever uh, local currency and be like, it's the exposure. Like, yeah. 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 Love the exposure. It'd be really good for you if you did this thing. <laughs> when, uh, you don't have to say names, but when was the last time y'all got, uh, duped or screwed over you, or maybe like an exposure type, type of deal? Uh, or you don't have to say, maybe that's a bad question. I don't want, I don't want to put you out. I mean, like, I don't want I don't know if we got screwed over on an exposure type thing. Like we've definitely been screwed over where like, you know, people say they're going to pay you and they don't. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that's, a th maybe people don't, uh, maybe people listening don't understand the exposure gimmick. Uh, 
So you want to explain the exposure? I mean, I, I think that just art, any kind of art, like people do that stuff to you. Like, uh, I know that like, um, you know, like graphic designers get the worst out of anybody. Yeah. You know, true. like you, know, you do this thing for free for me and uh, you'll get really good exposure. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not going to pay you money. Like you're doing this job, but you know, um, you know, and I guess for music, it's like, uh, uh, you know, if you want to play this show, you're not going to get paid. And a lot of people go and the bar made a bunch of money and you made nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah so, yeah, I think, uh, our, uh, one of the worst ones stories I've heard is, um, our drummer Bailey, he used to be in this rap group and play drums. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah, in, yeah, and in Mobile, they opened up for Machine Gun Kelly at this uh, oh, yeah. this place called um, the Soul Kitchen, and uh, yeah, it was like you know sell all these pre-sales. I think they sold. Geez, oh yeah, classic. I think, I think they sold like uh, close to five hundred bucks in pre-sales, and they didn't get many of it. Yeah, everyone's got a pre-sale story. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm not going to say that, uh, I'll never sell pre-sales again, but, yeah. um, the only way I'm ever selling pre-sales again is if, uh, I really love the band yeah. and, uh, and we're getting paid. Yeah. You know, if you tell us up front, Hey, you're not getting paid on this show, but you get to play at this band that you like a lot. That's cool. That's you different. Know, you, yeah. you're honest with us, right. You know? But if you say, you know, you have to pre-sale X amount of tickets, you're not getting paid like you know that's that's ridiculous that that thing happens all the time though right. i mean I, I i still know people that do that um there's a uh there's only one local promoter that really does that around here yeah still and um it's funny because this dude doesn't care what your band sounds like he's just trying to get as many people on it as possible to sell as many tickets as possible for whatever band coming through yeah so it's funny that I don't even think like, I don't know if he ever remembers when, you know, like when he emails us and stuff, but I like messing with him. So like whenever, it, I mean, like I've done it a hundred times now, uh, whenever we get the email to open up for whatever band, Buck uh, Cherry. Yeah. and it'll be like, uh, you know, uh, do you want to play this show? You got to pre-sell this many tickets, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I usually, uh, respond with, uh, something like we don't pre-sale tickets, but we'll play for 500 bucks or something like right. that. And like, or, uh, you know, um, I don't know, just stuff like that, you know, like, uh, and then if he responds, I usually double our guarantee. <laughs> like <laughs> if he says like, I can't, uh, I can't pay that much or whatever. And I'll be like, all right, how about a thousand dollars? Cut you a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's always going to be young bands. Yeah. Who- all for that. I'm not saying I never fell for it. Right. It just happened in a long time. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. We're the same way. Yeah. I remember, uh, I don't know. And I guess it's just, it's the promoters that are the main ones doing it. Right. And the touring bands are just like, yeah. You know what? Uh, telling the promoter like, eh, just pick whoever, you know, they're not going to make any money, but get them to sell pre-sales. Um, I remember we opened up for Richie Ramone and that was Richie Ramone once. Yeah. That was cool opening up for him, but it was the, it was the same deal where, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. When we played with Richie Ramone, uh, well it was, uh, two tours converged at the same time in Orlando and one was, one was well i don't remember exactly who was on what but the show was the queers the dwarves richie ramon and uh adam age oh, okay yeah uh so two were with one tour and two with the other tour yeah and we were the uh the opener and um uh the day of that show was the uh rehearsal dinner for my sister's wedding yeah and uh yeah i I pissed off a lot of people in my family when uh, I was like, I'm leaving at exactly this time to go play the show. And right. I didn't, you know, 
it wasn't a very nice thing to do. <laughs> uh, Tough call, so, man. It took a while for them to forgive me for that one, you know. Yeah. But uh, and I was in the wedding too, so yeah. Unfortunately, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was uh, that was fun because um, oh, and the rehearsal dinner was in a different city Oy. than the show, so um, so like I was only I had to leave specifically at a certain time, and uh, I the, my my drums were packed up with the, the band uh from practice the other the day before or whatever and um they had to set up my drums and i got to the venue and they were on stage waiting for me to play damn yeah <laughs> that was pretty cool rock star <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah they, they gave me a lot of shit for that one yeah but not as much as my family did, so <laughs> like on the other side yeah hey man it's it's tough man yeah. Tough decisions. It was a fun show. Um, I mean, if that tour came back through, I probably wouldn't play it now, though. But <laughs> but this was years ago. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. Social media has changed everything where now you know uh, every time somebody makes a yeah i mean stupid remark or it's just amazing to me that like um i'm not going to talk about anything specific or anyone specific but it's just amazing to me people that like when you give like your political opinions and you have a business and it's like do you not want to make money like do you want to cut out 50 percent of people who might be interested in whatever your product is, whether or not it's your band or whatever your business is like, you know, like you're running a business, like is, yeah. uh, is the other side's money not good to you? Yeah. <laughs> like is not, not worth the same amount. Like, oh, dude. what are you doing? You know, like, why are you going to ruin, you know, like you're only punishing yourself, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, if you have opinions, be smart enough not to say them publicly. Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't understand the uh, the want to be like this is, you know, this is my stance. Yeah, and I'm putting this broadcasting this to everybody. Mm. So yeah, if if you want to make any bold political statements, feel free to do it on the podcast right now. Oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm 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 too radical. Jake, you are too radical. Well. Uh, yeah, before, I'm way too radical. My well, politics are way too radical. Before I started uh, recording, you kick flipped into the into the uh, into the the scene. So, oh, yeah, that's funny. Um, <laughs> can't kick flip, <laughs> but <laughs> I've uh, done like two kick flips in my life. There you go. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, we've done like uh, forty-five minutes here. Uh, is there is there anything you have weighing heavy on your chest you want to say before we wrap it up here no i mean the only other thing that i maybe could talk about would be you know like swamp cabbage stuff you know yeah go for it well it's uh you know caffeine's records coming out in a couple weeks and then um still in the works and there's a lot going on with it but uh um supposed to be putting out uh a record for talk me off oh uh, nice yeah and then uh the only other thing that i have planned right now um and this is real early stages but uh there was a band from orlando that uh was pretty popular that uh andy was in and okay. uh and marcos our old uh or the person that lance replaced right uh Marcos was in the band too. And, uh, so it was basically like half of caffeine's way before caffeine's, yeah. uh, their record that they put out as, uh, and they were, they were popular at one time in Orlando. Um, their record that they put out, uh, 15 years ago was just on CD. And, uh, Andy asked me if I'd help out with vinyl for it. Nice. It's just going to be very limited. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, it's, it's going to be like late cuts or something, but we're working on that though, that, um, uh, uh, we're going to put out something special for their 15 an- year anniversary. So nice. some of the early caffeine songs 
were actually that band songs that never got recorded. So okay. not that we play any of the, we don't play any of those songs anymore, anyways. But right. um, What's yeah, that? some of them were actually those. What's that, that band? They were called BTH. Okay. Yeah, which uh, <laughs> I, if I remember the story right, it stands for Black Tar Heroin. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and so and so this is like their high school band, like right. when they yeah, started. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, they named it. They named their band BTH, the story I heard, uh, because uh, BTH is what killed uh, the singer of Sublime. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Big Sublime heads. Love it. No, opposite. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, they were happy that he died. I guess. <laughs> these are, these are, look, look, these are 16 year old kids. Oh, yeah. You know, 20 years ago. Right. right? <laughs> it was different times. Different times. I understand. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I still hate Sublime, but I don't. I don't think the dude should have died. And, right. You know. Well, uh, cool. Where? Uh, what social medias do you want to throw out there? None of them. None of them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Swamp Cabbage has a uh, Facebook and Instagram. Right. Same thing with Vicious Dreams and Caffeines. Um, there's other ones, but I don't really pay attention to them. I mean, I, I guess like I have a Twitter, but I haven't <laughs> logged in in years. Yeah. Uh, Tim runs Caffeine's Twitter. I don't know why he likes <laughs> Twitter. Uh, I, I, I don't even look to see what he posts. I, okay. I have no idea. I'll go but check. I guess Caffeine's have a Twitter. Um, you know, like Bandcamp. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got a Bandcamp. I mean, check out Swamp Cabbage Records Bandcamp. Um, that way, like, if you do listen digitally, we might actually get a penny from it. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> Unlike Spotify. You know? Right. You get uh, 0. 0.0001 of a penny. Yep. Nice. I, I think it's for every seven plays, you get a penny. Shit. Yeah. I need, I need them them Drake but, numbers. Uh, I haven't seen what it is yet. I, I saw it, like like, a couple hours ago. That uh, Bandcamp just came out with live streaming. Really? Service. So I, I, don't, I don't know what that means, but Bandcamp has always been way cooler to bands. You know? For sure. Unfortunately, most people don't listen to music on Bandcamp. For but, sure. Uh, but they're way nicer. And, you know, and they do all like, they're constantly doing those free days where everything goes to the artist yeah. and, or they're doing it donations. I mean, Bandcamp are like, you know, cool and like spotify is like the worst right you know, like for sure the band, so, yeah uh, it'd be cool if people started paying attention to that you know like sure we're all we're on spotify but like i i don't want spotify to make our money you know, make money off of us yeah. you know for Give sure money to band camp. go check out Bandcamp, everyone yeah just in general in general yeah cool but they I mean, if, if they got a live streaming thing going on now, then uh, that, that's that pretty sick. Cool. I'll check that out. Yeah, I'm hoping for the best of that one. <laughs> it's probably because you know they know every the artists hate Spotify. Yeah, you know, so yeah, they probably were like, we, you know, we should do this. Yeah, I think they have an edge, uh, definitely with artists over, uh, like you were saying, Spotify or iTunes or Apple Music, whatever they call it now. Mm. yeah and you know uh, and i've heard uh is it uh i've never used it but deezer pays like pays by far the most they're like the best of bands um i've never actually used it i mean i know that we're on there yeah but i think they pay like eight times what spotify does yeah like something crazy like that yeah. yeah oh and isn't that uh your boy jay-z he's title Oh, title. Maybe yeah. no. Maybe I'm talking about title, not Deezer. Title, yeah. I guess. Yeah, title's owned. Uh, I think a lot of different artists own it. Like that's their their big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, you could probably cut out that whole section. Okay. I don't want it's to. It's probably boring to everybody, and yeah. I got the facts wrong anyway. So. No. Uh, cool, man. Uh, I think we can wrap it up here. Um, All right. Well, Andrew. You had options, but you decided to talk to me. And I thank you. Alright. Alright. Thanks, yeah. uh, thanks for being my first Zoom guest. Cool.